What if I told you that you can convert an old gaming computer or an old server that is very cheap into an ultimate Active Directory lab? In this video, I'm going to show you how I'm converting an old gaming computer that I have, that's probably seven years old, into a lab that is going to run the God game of Active Directory. This is a lab that is going to be set up with a whole network of different Active Directory forests. And in this case, our ultimate goal is to attack this environment and learn Active Directory attacks. And at the same time, I will even take it further from what we have here, which is just a vulnerable lab environment that we can use to learn skills. I'm going to add Elastic Security. We're going to add EDR, Endpoint Detection and Response Solution. All this is going to add these logs going to an Elastic SIM and also we'll do some network detection and I'll add a firewall. So now that that's what we're doing, if this excites you, please follow along because I'm going to use an old desktop that I have. In fact, you can find it right here. This is an old gaming computer that I have. It was just sitting out there. It is 32 gigs of RAM and a terabyte and I installed Ubuntu on it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I did that. And if you like this, we're going to create a series until we end up with a fully functional lab. Okay, so it all started when I saw Jason on LinkedIn post about this lab here, Jason Hedix, shout out to him. He was reminding us that, hey, there's this wonderful lab. It's, called, it's by Mayfly and it's called Game of Active Directory. I looked at it and I said, I have to have that lab because it's amazing. It will definitely be, have been helpful for the OSCP when I passed, for the OSEP, the certified red team operator. And I know that people who are taking the PNPT from TCM security are also completing this lab. So let's let's set it up. Well, first, I have a server rack in my back here. You, you probably can't see it right now, but this is what it looks like. In this server rack, there is a very old forgotten gaming PC all the way at the bottom. So give me one second. This is some equipment here. A messy, obviously. I don't have time to organize it, but it's a work in progress. Down here is this dusty PC. As you can see, there's a USB plugged in right now. I actually finally ended up cleaning it up, so don't give me hate mail here. And here's an, another dirty uh, monitor. I was like, okay, this is what I'm starting with. Why am I showing you this? Because in order for you to run this lab, you don't have to go and spend $700, $500. You can find yourself an old gaming PC that is about 32 gigs of RAM or more. You can also maybe get yourself a server. Here I was looking at eBay. I would pick maybe a Dell R720, maybe R740. They're a little loud, but not too loud. And you can use this one. It's, these are workhorses. These are 128 gigs with 16 cores for $305. This is actually going to be a little overkill for our lab, but I suggest something similar to this. I have a couple of these in the background here as well. You probably saw them in that video that I was showing earlier, but you can also find a super micro computers that they're super simple or an old gaming computer that is a decent CPU. And once you do that, what you want to do is obviously start with a USB drive. So here I have a cheap USB drive from Amazon. I think I bought like 10... 10 of these for very cheap and this one i'm going to actually burn the iso file in this case our lab requires us to run ubuntu and since this is going to be a second computer i didn't want to find a windows license anyway so i went to the ubuntu website hit the download for the desktop you can use the server whichever you want i just chose the desktop because it was the easiest one for me i came back and i also downloaded rufus so this is rufus here just hit the download button so here it's like, hey, download, uh, what do you want? Rufus 4.3, close that ad. Here's my Rufus, open. And here Rufus is asking like, hey, what do you want to do? Well, this one I already named it Ubuntu. Your USB drive will show up here. You need to plug it in your other desktop that you want to burn your ISO file. And then after that, I said, let's select my ISO file, the Ubuntu. Open this one is in my downloads, and I'm just saying, okay, I'm going to name it Ubuntu and burn it. You hit start, it will warn you several times here that hey, this is going to you know take over your USB drive. But once you burn it to the USB drive, the next order of business here is to take this USB drive, go and plug in into your desktop. As you can see here, coming back to my desktop, I plugged it in, hit F12 several times 
And as you can see, that's what it was showing me as I was going through it. And this will first take me through the installation process. So from here, all we need to do is install Ubuntu on our machine. Just follow the prompts, name your computer, and make sure that you know you can connect to your Wi-Fi or network. And once it's connected, that's where we will be. I even went further because I wanted to access mine remotely and installed VNC. So just look up VNC installation process or you can find a link in the description. But I now have a desktop that's running Ubuntu. Here I can access it from my machine here because I plan on using this for my videos to go through this series. So I need to be able to access it. So using remote desktop, here's my machine. It's called God. I'm accessing it right now and I'll give it my password. As you can see, I'm signed into an Ubuntu desktop. So this is where the creator of this project wants us to start from. So from there, I'm going to be following Quincy and Tulis uh, instructions here. Was was that they are for VirtualBox? So first, let's go ahead and install VirtualBox. I also have VMware Workstation here, but when I tried it, it didn't work. So I'm just going to go with the VirtualBox. Okay, let's give it a password. All right. Yes. So this is just going to install VirtualBox for us. And while this is working, I already did an apt update upgrade. Then I'm installing VirtualBox. Then we can install HashCorp, pip, set up the environment, clone the repo, install all the requirements. Some of these I might already have, but I'll do it anyway. Then uh, afterwards, we can do a Vagrant app and hopefully this works. All right. So I'm going to stick with these. So I installed VirtualBox. This is the Vagrant. Nothing fancy here. All right. It looks like I had Vagrant already, but it's trying to upgrade, setting it up. Okay. Okay. Vagrant version. 2.219 okay so we need to install py python pip and find the version as well it's already installed i have pip 22 install python virtual environment which i already have but run that one again okay then once we have the python environment now we need to clone the repo actually yeah this is https so this will work i think the other the actual original instructions try to clone using ssh and you might get a key is not trusted so ls cd so here we've got cd ad god providers virtual box so in here, I see that we have a vacuum file and inventory. So I already have Git, but if Git is not installed, you do that. This is the Python environment. All right. CD God Ansible and activate the environment. So we need to go back um, to the Ansible folder. Okay. Let's activate our environment. Pip in so Ansible core. And once you have your Ansible core installed, PyWinRM. Just making sure that we have this. Okay, so most of them are saying satisfied for me because I tried with VMware and it didn't work. Okay, now let's install all the Galaxy requirements. All right. So once you are happy that we have everything, okay, so Vagrant up from here. I don't know what I was doing there. But here we go, Vagrant app for VirtualBox. 
and we have virtual box installed so hopefully this will not take too long it's saying about 18 minutes here so i'm going to pause this and when it's done we'll come back and check it out so, and, uh, okay so it succeeded but it looks like it's also complaining about uh, i have a bridge network adapter and a host only network adapter so i have these two adapters here that um shouldn't be there so i think my vmware workstation oh yeah vmware workstation is right here so let me remove my vmware workstation so that this can be fixed okay so i'm saying sudo vmware installer remove vmware workstation all configuration information is about to be removed do you wish to keep your configuration files okay says uninstall it was successful let's do an ipa okay so now that the uninstall was successful i'll rerun vagrant up here just to make sure and this time it actually does bring the networks one net and one host only so that's good okay just checking on this it has been a while maybe 20 minutes or so and i'm on dc03 so there's two more servers server two and server three all right so as you can see here everything finished up to server three so let's go and check our virtual box we see five virtual machines so so far we are now ready to move on to this part here where we run all the playbooks so i'll be running each playbook individually and in the next video i'll show you how to run the build.yamo and then we'll go from there otherwise thanks and see you next one